Hey everybody, it's Ross and I'm excited about life, not because everything is going great, because it's 75 degrees outside and I'm self-employed and it's hard for me to concentrate. You may know the feeling, but I get a lot of letters and requests for donations, etc. in the mail from pastors and ministries and I've been doing a study on worship. What is true biblical worship? And I got this letter in the mail and it was surprising to me that I received it at the time I'm doing this study. It was a provoking letter. It says simply, when would you think of the word worship or when you think of the word worship, what comes to mind? Good question. I like questions. They provoke an answer. For most people, the word evokes thoughts of the singing we do in our corporate gatherings. In many churches, the chief musician is referred to as a worship leader. And a worship leader is regarding as something, or as worship is regarded as something distinct from the portion of the service devoted to preaching. It's a separate and distinct, uh, separate part of the service is what this letter is saying. But is it correct to think of worship as an activity limited to church on Sundays? Good question, because if you're waiting to worship God on Sundays with music, singing hallelujah and all the hymns that we do, and that's a good thing, but if that's the only time you're doing it, how do you worship God on the other days of the week is, is basically, I'm paraphrasing. Does true worship require specific formats, rituals, and locations? Another good question. It provokes a, a, a thought for me. Are you worshiping outside of church in different locations besides church? Does it always involve music? Another good question. What did Jesus mean when he called us to worship in spirit and in truth? Another good question. He goes on to say, worship is the one of the most misunderstood concepts in the church today. I would agree. We've nearly lost hold of the biblical meaning of the word. That's the question. It doesn't matter what you and I believe is true. What's the most important thing is what does the Bible say about true worship? Many Christians seem to think the pinnacle of worship is some kind of inexpressible, intangible feeling or emotional high. That's true. I've done a video on my Facebook page. It's called Firework or Fireworks Christianity. Everybody's looking for the next buzz on, religious buzz on, an experience that happens to them. Is true biblical worship an experience that happens to you? Many people just need to have that hallelujah on the mountaintop glory to God experience and when it it happens it's a good thing but when they it doesn't happen it's a bad thing or they come down like a sugar high. Music is often seen as a tool for propelling people into the state of worshipful euphoria. Yep, I would agree. As a result the unrelenting debates and church splits oftentimes are over music styles and widely regarded as a difference of opinion about worship. Yeah, that's true too. That's absolutely on target. I commonly hear these debates referred to as worship wars. I'm reading from this, this letter, and certainly that's true. If you think of worship as a state of emotional ecstasy that happens to you rather than an expression of praise that involves both mind and heart, if your understanding of worship goes no deeper than your opinion in the debate over tra traditional versus contemporary styles of church music, you haven't scratched the surface of what it truly means to worship the Lord. I would agree. The, the thing is, do we really know what biblical worship is? And I'll close with this. Biblical worship, worship in spirit and in truth, and this I would agree with, is a constant attitude. I would agree. It's not just about on Sunday, singing, glorifying God with other believers, and that's all good. But true biblical worship in spirit and in truth is a constant attitude, 24-7, every day of the week. It's a persistent inclination of your heart and mind toward the majesty and glory of the Lord. You know, you can do that, worship God just like that. Your inclination, your spirit and mind toward the majesty and the glory of the Lord. Isn't he great? He's great 
every day, every minute of the day, you can worship Him. And in spirit and in truth, without all the hoopla that many times you might even see on TV. Have you seen that stuff on TV? It's absolutely, lots of times, ridiculous. It's not a momentary event. It's not about two hours on Sunday, but a full-time, non-stop activity. That's what true worship is. That is born out of, of faithful praise, faithful prayer, faithful service, and study of God's Word. I have to agree. You may agree too. Hopefully you do. Biblical worship in spirit and in truth is a constant attitude, a persistent inclination of your heart and mind toward the majesty and glory of the Lord. It is not a momentary event, but a full-time, say it with me, full-time, non-stop activity that is born out of in faithful praise, prayer, service, and study of God's Word. So hopefully this message finds you and it clears up maybe some questions you had about what is true biblical worship. I'm doing a study on it from God's Word. I got this letter from this pastor and it really hits home today and I wanted to share it with you. So hopefully I'll see you down the road sometime. The weather's getting nice. Hopefully it is wherever you are. Till next time, always remember, do what you can, where you can, when you can, the very best you can. I'm down and out. I'm going to enjoy the weather. Take care.